was like, yes, yeah, so <clears throat> it is. Yeah, I just feel like you got like dressed up or something. I'm not dressed up. You got a hot date? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> hey y'all. Wow. Look at that quarantine week. Mm, shit, we fat. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> well. Judge your mother. <laughs> it's just like wow. Like maybe that's why I have. I haven't camera. really seen myself in so long. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Mm mm mm. Do I need to get my mask? If you want to. Oh. What's going on YouTube? It's me Tiffany, and I'm here with my co-host Tanea. Hey guys. And we are back with an all new video. Oh my god. Wow, we haven't seen you guys in so long. It's I don't been even a long know time. when was the last time. Um, it's been a very long time. We saw you. I think we told y'all what we did for Easter, so it had to have been like probably like a month. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. about a month. Um, because I got my procedure on April the twentieth, so. I am here for three things. One, I miss you all. You guys miss me. Well, us, because you guys keep DMing us. Well, me. Huh. Have you got, has people said anything to you? No, nobody <laughs> says anything to me, really. Unless it, nobody says anything to me unless it gets too bad. Like, I feel like if we were to go like two months without a video, uh -huh. then I may get a few DMs. But no, nobody ever reaches out to me because they already know that. You know what Tanea was doing. I had to drag her down this basement. Um, I was chilling. But, um, yeah, so when I said it earlier, like, so many people were like, oh, my God, I hope y'all really make a video. So, here we go. Here we are. Um, the second thing was I really, really, really wanted to um, come on camera mm -hmm. to uh, extend my condolences to Kevin. Yes. And his entire Her family. family. Yes. Um, I'm sure that you know by now that his mother, uh, Mama Scorpion, passed. She passed uh, last week on May the 12th. Um, and, you know, there were a lot of people praying for her mm -hmm. because she had been in the hospital. And um, at some point she did have uh, the coronavirus, but then she beat it. And um, so, you know, like. I thought that things were looking up. Like, I had Nene's mother put her on a prayer um, list and had her praying for her. Like, people people all over the world have been praying for Mama Scorpion because everybody loves her. Yes. Um. So, I was so sad, y'all. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I was so sad when Kevin said that... Why do I still have this in my ear? Mm -hmm. When Kevin said um that she had passed away, like, mm -hmm. I instantly just felt so sad. sad for um especially him mm -hmm. and his family because i mean she's just like the head of their family and i just thank kevin for you know sharing her with us because mm -hmm. when i first started watching the scorpion show that was like some of the first videos that i had watched too mm -hmm. was her like going off Cussing people out, that was a fun time. giving her opinions, and then you know, just when he started doing the videos where she would give people advice and mm. tell <laughs> stories, like the videos. I mean, me and Tanae, I, I had to find my picture. I said I was going to post it um, on my Insta Snap and tag Kevin uh, when we went to the. Was it the first Scorpion show? Coming no, out? it was the first one. Um, I have a picture with Mama Scorpion. Are you in that picture, or was it just me and her? It may be just y'all too. Because um, I, I took a picture. I. I know me, you, and Kevin have a picture, and then I also have a picture with Mikel, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I have a picture with Mama Scorpion, so. Um, but yeah, so, I was just, I'm, I'm still sad. I mean, literally. It's, it's really sad. Every um, live, and uh, he's done lives, and he's done, um, like, YouTube lives and Instagram lives, just to check in. Like, I'm so happy that Kevin is doing those, because I'm I'm literally like worried about Kevin. Like, I was like, I mean, I knew I knew that I love the Scorpion and Macau, right. but it's like literally like they're my YouTube family, and we've been following each other for so many years, and I just feel so sad for him. So I'm just so happy because that it's like you know we've become attached, right? To his family also, exactly. so it's just like 
if it hurts us, then like we know the pain that you have. So it's just like a tremendous yeah. sadness here. So I'm um, just so I'm so happy that he has been like coming yeah. on and and just letting like us updating know. people yeah. like you know I'm okay. Like I'm you know, sad. But I'm you know, okay. just letting us know what's going on. So. Um, and I was happy that the one I watched last night he actually mentioned Mikel because you know Mikel, like he said, Mikel has been around for 12 years mm -hmm. i mean not even when they're recording mikhail is still at the house right. sometimes i mean she was like in his life for 12 whole years like this i mean if something happened to tanea's mother i would be so upset so i can just imagine how you know mikhail feels and you know he said that uh <coughs> mikhail said that he was um you know he had finally cried about it the other day and i was just like you know i was worried about mikhail i was just I mean, because we've seen so many of Kevin's family members. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just thinking about his nieces yep. and his nephews and his sisters. Like, I just, I, my, I just feel so sad about it. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. But I thank God that Kevin is in the spirits that he is in. I thank God that, you know, people have been, even though you don't have to, because like Mikhail had came on and said, you know, Mama Scorpion's policies we're fine and everything. Right. Anything that you are sending to Scorpion, it's just like when you go to somebody's house to give your condolences and you give them a card. You put $25 into something. People have been doing that, sending money to the GoFundMe, sending money to his cash app and stuff. So I just thank God that people are really showing him love and um, mm -hmm. supporting him because and showing that, you know, people really do, really did love Mom Scorpion. Right. And they really do love Kevin and his family. So I just thank God for that. Um, and... I just hope that everybody continues to pray for them because this is just the beginning. Right. You know so what I mean? Continue to check in on them. Yeah. Because when th my thing is when somebody dies, when it gets quiet is when people, when you really need right. people the most. You know, like. Usually like the first month, everybody's available. Right. So, exactly. It's just like after that, you still have to check in right. and, you know, talk to people and make sure everything's okay. Yeah. So I'm excited for, um, one thing that I am excited about, like I'm excited. I'm excited to see what Kevin will do next. And that's right. what he was talking about on his video last night. He was like, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I'm 35. I've been taking care of my mom. And, you know, my sister was taking care of Channon for two years. So when Channon did pass, because she was her caregiver, it was so hard for her to, and still is to this day, to get a just get a routine yeah. and just focus on, you know, like her and my nephew and stuff. So it's going to be hard for Kevin to, you know, figure out what he wants to do next and just solely focus on him. It's hard when you, you know, for the past couple of years, his life has been his mother. So, I'm excited to see what he does next. I was telling um, to Nanam, he's always talked about moving to Atlanta. So, I'm hoping, like, that he still thinks about something like that. Like, I'm just excited for Kevin. Yes. I'm just excited for Kevin. But, um, yeah, yeah. So, y'all keep praying for him. Moving on to me. So, again, y'all know I got this goddamn procedure on April the 20th. So... That whole day, that morning was just a shit show. Like, because of y'all know what, nobody could go to the hospital with me. This was like my first big procedure. So I was just like really sad that my mother couldn't come. Sad that, you know, like Tanea couldn't come. Like literally nobody could come with me. Um, As soon as I got in there. Huh? Sorry, dude. It's okay. As soon as I got in there, they took my cell phone. Literally, like I didn't get a chance to text my mother or anybody and say I'm in. I took, I, you know, I'm about to get nothing they literally took it and I, told, I just bust out crying I told him I was like I need my phone like I have to tell my mother you know what's going on and stuff he was like you can't take your phone you know because it was like five o'clock in the morning I wasn't getting the procedure until seven so it was like okay I'm gonna be sitting in this bed for two hours why can't I have my goddamn phone like I was just so why was mad. the reason because because you don't have anybody with you to take your belongings. You know, usually they give you that clear bag and you oh, give it to the person. Oh, yeah, because I'm ready to fight. Okay. So they put it in a locker and then when you leave, they get it out. So I was just like, I was just so sad. Like, I just knew I was going to have my phone, be tweeting and shit until it was time for mm. me to go back. Damn. So I'm just sitting there scared of shit. Of, of course, because of you, you know what is going on. Like, I'm in a fucking mask. They keep taking my goddamn temperature. They sticking fucking needles in me. Like, I was just stressed the fuck out. So, I get in the back and y'all know me. Like, it's just like, <laughs> it's so funny when Tanea isn't around because it's literally like showing off when your parent isn't around. Like, I can just say whatever I want to and don't have to worry about Tanea, like, giving me a dirty look. 
As soon as they take me in the bag, all of these fucking nurses and doctors in there, the room is bright as shit. What did you say? I've never been in a room like that they give you surgery. So did it's you just say so anything bright. about Grey's Anatomy? So I'm literally like, does anybody watch Grey's Anatomy? Yeah. Because I, I just literally. feel like I'm in an episode of Grey's Anatomy. So the, uh, the nurse is laughing and she's like, no, I don't watch it. So at this point, nobody watches it. The anesthesiologist has already gave. She's like, I'm going to give you a little cocktail. And she put something in my arm. So literally, like I felt my body tingling and the nurse, I mean, the doctor was like, you know what? I watch it. She was like, well, I watch she it for. Uh-uh. She was like, I watch it for the drama. She was like, I don't necessarily know if like all those operations and stuff, or, you know, real or whatever. She was like, but I like the drama. Um, so she was like, you know, tell me what's your favorite episode. And I'm just talking. And then when I woke up, because <laughs> that's <laughs> hey, all Daddy, I remember. <laughs> you stupid moron. That's all. Like, they literally, like, you know, they was telling me, like, I didn't know, literally had my arms out straight. My fucking arms they down. like, oh, yeah, she's going to be a real good one. Slide down. Slide your bottom down as far as you can. And the next thing I knew, I woke up. And <laughs> my vaginal area in the Yeesh. bottom of my stomach were in so much mm, pain shambles and my no. eyes were closed because i felt them that's probably what woke me up i felt them you know how they switch you from the bed they rolled you into the bed that's in recovery so the nurse is talking to me and i'm like what color are my nails what color are my nails and I, but i couldn't open my eyes because my eyes are so heavy and she said they're like uh, um a dark pink. I said that means I'm cold. I'm so cold because I had mood polish on my nails. <laughs> and wow. when it's dark, it's re- I'm Thank cold. Because I would have died. So she was like, "How do you feel?" And I was like, "My vagina hurts so bad." Oh my god. And she was like, "Okay." She was like, "You really?" And I was like, "I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty." <laughs> Drama. Like, uh, my throat is going to close and she was like I'm not sure if they put a breathing tube down so that could have that could be the reason because she told me so they didn't know because I haven't had a, which I need to schedule one I haven't had a sleep apnea test at this size um, yeah, I had a sleep I had one like 10 years ago it might have been less than that but it's been years no um, it's, it's probably definitely more than 10 years ago so she was like um, we don't know if you have it or not so we'll be watching you if we do notice that you stop breathing we'll put the tube down your throat so um, my throat was so y'all when I woke up it was like <laughs> It was no spit in my mouth. Yikes. And she was like, okay, I'm going to give you a couple sips of, sips of water, but you can only sip it, she said, because the, anest- the um, anesthesia will make you throw up. Shit. As soon as I sipped the fucking water, my stomach started hurting. I was just like, oh my God, mm-hmm. I said my stomach hurts so bad and my mouth is so dry. So she was like, I'm going to... Um, Lord. She put something in my arm. So, uh, maybe she gave me morphine. I don't yeah, she, know. This is going to make you shut the hell up. Then once like 20 minutes went by, she gave me some crackers and then she gave me an oxy. I really don't remember much after that. My mother came and got me. I got home. Um, I ate because I really wanted some grits. I do remember that I was really hungry. Mm-hmm. And then I pretty much slept the rest of the day. Um, the rest of the day, I was just pretty woozy. But after that day, mm-hmm. from April the 21st, until let me get the exact date for y'all because I want to be clear. Wait a minute, my boss just texted me. Yikes, we may have to pause this. I don't even want to say nothing because I don't know if my boss watched this. Um, until May the 15th. So what that was the first date? April the 21st. To May 15th. Till May 15th. Okay. So that was a like solid three weeks. Mm-hmm. I have had, or I had, the most severe cramps that I have ever had in my entire life. Now, the 21st was a Tuesday. So I hadn't, after I got the procedure, like, I never talked to, um... A doctor, um, she, like she never told me like, oh, you know, the procedure went well. We took this much out of uterus, blah blah blah. So Thursday, I called the doctor's office because I just was like, I'm in so much pain, like I can't, I can't even, I can't, like literally, y'all, like I wasn't sleeping. I would have cramps all day long, followed by hot lava blood. Now, if you're going to talk I'm just like telling this, you. I'm going to have to leave. So, 
I called Thursday. She says, oh, you know, I was going to, this is the surgeon. This isn't my OBGYN. This is the surgeon. She's like, oh, I was going to call you today. Um, you know, we did take such and such amount of inches out and, um, we sent your labs back. Nothing came back cancerous. Praise God. Like that the Lord. made me feel so much better. Like, but I was in so much pain. It was just like, okay, girl. I am in so much pain. I understand. She's like, well, you know, you got such and such amount of inches scraped out of you. You know, it was a lot up there. Woo! I'm expecting you to be in pain. But everybody oh, else that has had a DNC are like, yeah, the first couple of days you're going to have cramps. And, you know, you might be tired for that week. But then you're going to feel great. These wasn't no little cramps. Like, I was literally bedridden. Like, I couldn't do anything. Anything. Thing. She couldn't do anything, y'all. So, she sent me more Motrin, but she told me you can only take Motrin 800 every 8 hours. Do y'all know how long 8 hours is? Yes, it's a full working day. So, she also sends me Tylenol 3, the Tylenol with codeine. They don't do nothing but put you to fuck to sleep. Yeah. So, more days go by. I'm still in fucking pain. So, I call her back on Tuesday. She's like, you know, I don't think anything went wrong in the procedure. Um, if you want to go into the ER to get a CAT scan, she's like, I don't know. You know, like, again, like I said, we did scrape a lot out. So I'm not surprised that you're in a lot of pain. Because, you know, my thing was, if y'all scrape this much out of me, why am I still bleeding like this? Like, when does that stop? Because right. y'all already scraped so much out. So, um, mm, Jesus. Yeah, so literally, I had j I just was in pain every day. Like the Motrin would kick. I mean, it would take so long for the Motrin to kick in, y'all. Like it was like to the point where I would wake up and have cramps, and I would have cramps from let's say six in the morning mm. until maybe five in the afternoon, mm. and then I would be okay. And then one o'clock in the morning, they would start again, and then I would have them all night. And then I would wake up and I would have a good morning. But then all afternoon I would have them like literally. Mm -hmm. But y'all not understanding like this is what my uterus felt like. Like just squeezing, mm -hmm. squeezing and you know, pinching. I like I watched this YouTube. Like I, I literally have been YouTubing like crazy. Um, People that have uh, like bad menstrual cramps and stuff. And this one girl, she literally was like, you know, I wanted to do a raw video while I have cramps. And she literally was me. She was literally rocking back and forth. She was like sleeping in the fetal position. She was drinking hot tea. She was like literally like at this point in her life, she had to take out an FMLA that will protect her um, her job so that the week of her menstrual, she's off every month because her period cramps are too intense. Mm. She would sit on the toilet and like literally you just sit on the toilet because it's so much pressure nothing's going to come yeah, out I was gonna say, I it's just pressure so it makes you feel like you have to go to the bathroom like <sighs> my thighs oh my god my thighs kind of hurt a little bit right now i'm gonna get to where i'm at right now but it's like whatever is closer to your bone like that's where it hurts in your thighs like this is a this isn't a normal thigh pain my back was hurting but like I was in so much pain that I was nauseous mm. so I really wasn't eating that much like it was just like I was literally eating crackers and drinking hot tea no, she really was. just so that I could take medicine I have burn marks on my fupa because I mm. had been attached to a uh, heating pad for three weeks straight <laughs> on the highest level I wasn't going anywhere without a heating pad oh lord y'all mm. Finally, last week, I had my post-op appointment. I'm still in pain. The surgeon was busy, but the surgeon and the OBGYN doctor work for, um, oh, I was just making sure she wasn't about to come down here and ask or something. The surgeon and the OBGYN doctor work for the same practice. So, um, she was, you know, I wanted to see her though, because my, my OBGYN is like really sweet, soft spoken, very gentle. <laughs> so she was like, um, you know, I just, y'all, as soon as I got in that doctor's office, y'all know what I did. Crazy. I sobbed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <it's> so much. 
<laughs> oh, the other thing was the OBGYN. Is, I mean, the the surgeon, when I was there, the first day I ever met her, when I got the procedure, she brings up a hysterectomy. So I'm just like, whoa, can we calm right. down for a minute? So when I talk to her on the phone again, she brings it up. So I'm telling the OBGYN, like, you know, having a baby isn't at the top of my list, but I don't want to take the option away. I don't want to lose my uterus. Like, there's no in between here. Like, what are we going to do? I'm like, the Motrin isn't working. The Tylenol Cody isn't working. But y'all won't even send me no more of that because y'all scared of people getting in the dick. No, they think they thought Tiffany was a junkie. They only want you to take Tylenol. I've never liked Tylenol. Let's be clear. I hate Tylenol. The only Tylenol I like is PM. And it's not because it makes me the pain go away. It makes me go the fuck to sleep. That's it. I hate Tylenol. I don't like anything about it. It doesn't. It's never helped me with my headaches. It damn sure don't help me with cramps. Right. But you can take Tylenol every six hours. So it's just like, bitch, like, okay, I'll just take Tylenol just for the fun of it. Meanwhile, I've been taking Motrin for like two months straight because remember I was having cramps. They weren't this bad, but they were bad. So I've been taking Motrin to the point where my kidneys are starting to get affected. So my OBGYN is just like, yeah, we're thinking about maybe putting you on uh, endometriosis medicine. You don't have endometriosis. But you have all the symptoms, so I think that it may help. The surgeon tells her, no, I don't like that idea. Um, so then she's like, well, um, you can try the hormone pills again that I was on. But the surgeon told me that I was taking so many hormones that she was afraid that I could develop breast cancer. So then she brings up the depo shot and, or Mirena. I just started crying again. I was like, I can't. Mm. I can't do this. She was like, we can give you a Valium, um, you know, for the Mirena because I think I told y'all before that my, my exams are very painful. Oh, I also oh forgot to tell y'all. Oh my God. <laughs> Wait. That is literally a <laughs> lot thickens. I'm sorry if a man is watching this. Cut it off. They also tell me, she says, when we were doing your procedure, when we put your legs up in the stirrups, your uterus fell to the bottom. So I'm like, what? Tiffany, can you please? What do you mean? So she's like, yeah, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have to have a surgery eventually that will reattach your your uterus because at some point you could go to the bathroom and your uterus could be poking out of your vagina. Ah! Excuse me. Oh, God. So this explains why my exams have been so painful because my uterus is so fucking low. Oh Lord. Jesus. So she's like, yeah, I'm um, so back fast forward back to the post op appointment. She's like, um, we don't want to do the surgery for your uterus yet. She's like, because if you do decide to have a child, it could detach again. She's like, but if you also decide to have a child before the procedure, your uterus is so low that I could be put on bed rest as soon as two months pregnant. I don't know why my body is like this, y'all. Um, I thank God that I don't have um, cancer. Hold on, I'm going to be part of my boss. But I've just been through so much in these past three to four weeks. So, um, it wasn't real. I mean, she just checked me to make sure everything was healed. It was, it was no complications. The <coughs> procedure went great. But she really didn't have a reason as to why. So she told me to take the hormone pills again, but to stop taking the birth control um, to see if that would work. That was Thursday. On Friday, I went to my primary care doctor because my blood pressure has been high the last three times I went to the doctor. So I was just like, whoa, like I'm not trying to have a fucking stroke. I go to my primary care doctor. What did I do? I started crying again. Because I haven't seen her since November. So I'm telling her everything that's been going on. I'm telling her about all the pain again. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe this has been happening to you. I'm so sorry. I'm just telling her, you know, that night when I got home from the post-op, I'm looking up about the depot shot, y'all. People are saying that my hair is going to fall out. <laughs> no, it's um, literally, I've heard that depot shot is literally one of the worst things ever. Yo, people are like, penis. if I could go back and save my life, I would because the depot shot destroyed my life. I have severe panic attacks. I have depression and anxiety. I never feel good. I'm bald headed now. My period went nowhere. Like, 
I gain weight. Now, y'all, if I gain more weight, I'm going to be on my 600 pound. Like, so I'm just like, oh my God. Like, I didn't even get to the moraine. I was like, I can't do this shit because I don't want, I don't even want them to go up there and put this shit on my uterus and kill me. So I'm telling her about that. And she's just like, you know, I had Morena. She was like, so, you know, I don't want you to cancel it out. She said, as soon as I got my Morena, my period just stopped. And I really never had it again. She said, I'd never had pains again. She said, you know, the internet is going to say a lot. She said, I wouldn't recommend the depot shot either. She said, but the good thing about the Morena is you can, they can remove it. If you don't like the way it's making you feel, if it's not doing what it's supposed to. With the depot shot, you have to wait three months for it to get out of your system. system. Yeah. So, um, she was like, you know, just think more about it. She was like, now, your pressure is high. She was like, but you've been under a lot of stress. You've been in a lot of pain, and you've been taking a lot of Motrin. So, she took me off of the Motrin, and she prescribed me oxycodone. And she said, for the weekend, I want you to take it every six hours. Now, I only had one of these before, but I was already under, under the an anesthesia. So I didn't know, like, what was going to happen. I literally slept for, like, three days. But I had no pain. Between no <laughs> hormone pills and the oxys, I had no pain. And that was last week. Here we are this week. I've had cramps two days. Um, nothing like before, though. I mean, it still hurts. But compared to the pain that I had, like today I'm having some mild cramps. I'm cramping, you know, my abdomen is a little sore. My thighs are a little sore, but I'm here talking to you guys. So it can't be that bad. I thank God. What? It's a, it's a song they used to sing on the old people choir at my church. I, oh, no, that might be one of the Jones songs. I thank God. <laughs> for being alive because I, I thought I was going to die I thought I was going to die so I'm going to call her tomorrow and let her know I need more of these hormone pills because I'm running out but I want to make sure because you know my, my grandmother had breast cancer my great aunt and my mother so I don't want to develop any breast cancer but I also don't want these cramps and I also don't want a hysterectomy and I also don't want Miranda so what I need from you guys I need y'all, I need some testimonies. I need to know who had the depot mm -hmm. shot and who had Marina. If you don't want to talk about it under the comments, DM me on Instagram. I need to know what what y'all had because um, if they say I can't take the hormone pills again, I don't want to go back to being in pain. Um, but that's probably why y'all haven't seen me on social media like that. That's the main reason we really haven't been on YouTube. Shout out to my best friend. Um, I just had to thank her, you know, last week. And just tell her, you know, I don't know how I would have made it without Tanea. Like, Tanea was cooking. Tanea was taking no, care I of really puppies. Was. Once Kari got back, Tanea was taking care of Kari. Like, she was maintenance in the house. I really missed you, Tiffany. It really, really made me realize how much you do and how much I don't do. And it's just like, Lord, I please get her healthy because I'm tired. Just doing the simple things like mopping the floor made me so happy. Y'all, I couldn't sweep the mop. I couldn't really make my bed. I wasn't doing any laundry. I couldn't do any. I couldn't lift Chippy. I could lift Peppa. I couldn't really lift Chippy because but it me, would hurt so bad. Chippy don't play that. So it's just like yeah, you so, cannot lift one and not the other. I finally like had my appetite back. Like I'm hungry as shit right now. I'm just so happy to not be in the pain that I was in. Like thank, thank you, you to everybody who was DMing me, asking me how I was. I'm sure y'all saw me on Twitter the times that I was like complaining, but I was dying. And um I'm nervous. Like every day I'm nervous. Like today I have cramps and it's just like okay, like I just have to deal with it, but I never know, like, what day I'm going to wake up. Like, I think on Mother's Day, I had really bad cramps. But they, of course, they weren't as bad, but they still hurt. And mm -hmm. it's like, I don't want to go through this for the rest of my life. So, I'm going to have to um, figure something out. I may have to end up getting a marina. Or, you know, I have to decide about that um, hysterectomy. I've been talking to my therapist about it. She was just telling me that a lot of people de develop depression, you know, I don't want to get a hysterectomy and then my friends all around me start having babies. Tanae have a baby. Simone have a baby. Bitch, I can tell you who I am. My sisters baby, start okay. having babies and it's just like, oh man, I want a baby. You can and have then I'd if be I sad. Have one, you can have mine. And then I'll be sad and depressed. I'm and I just feel you. like it'll feel weird to walk around without a uterus. I'm sure somebody watching this has had a hysterectomy too. And then I saw that the recovery time for a hysterectomy is two fucking months. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like, I don't know. I tell you what. 
It ain't no, nothing a man can say to me. Like, nothing. That's why I, uh, I constantly... I just don't feel like men should speak on women subjects at all. Especially when it has to do with my motherfucking body. Because you could never like wrap your head around mentally what I go through and like I go through it monthly this lady goes through it daily some people go through it like you know every few months but it's just like you just never know what someone is going through and it's just like for you to make me try to feel like I'm not strong or I'm less than or that me being a woman is not literally the greatest thing and on earth, it's just like, you can kiss my ass because... A man could never handle this. I just like, honestly, sometimes, sometimes I do wish my cramps on men. When I see them, they I would just die. be like, Lord, please give them cramps in their balls and thighs. I would just... They would die. Sit back and watch and eat ice cream, honestly. Because it's just like, nobody understands our pain. Nobody. Can you literally imagine a twisting pain in your balls, ass, in your ass, and thighs for God knows how long this is going to last? And it's not only am I in pain, I am bleeding. On top of that, my emotions are just at an all time motherfucking high. And it's just like, I want to eat everything. I'm literally like a monster. But I'm really trying to hold everything together. It's Don't terrible. question me. Don't ask me nothing. It's terrible. It's, it's honestly terrible. So, um, also you guys can give me some ideas of, um, you know, what you, I mean, I've, what you all do for when you are in that pain. I mean, I do Motrin. I do Tylenol. I have um, Advil PM. I have Aleve. I think you actually have a nice little medicine thing going on. So um, I I drink hot tea. I have my heating pad. She takes baths. I take. I soak in the tub. That's another thing. I'm not a bath person. I'm a shower person. I've been taking baths non. I mean, two baths a day yeah. just to sit in hot water. And they would help some days. Some days they really would soothe it. But some days, no. I would literally be cramping in the bathtub. So um, yeah. And I, the thing about the bathtub is it has to be hot because I need to soak my uterus. But now I'm sweating because oh, it's so hot. Yep. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. mm. So it's just... I was soaking my feet the other day in the tub to do this little mask and I got hot. Yeah. I was like, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it's really um bad. But I thank God that right now I'm okay. I don't know how long... I will be okay. Um, I feel like I have like a, a PTSD from the pain. Like every day I wake up like, is this going to be a good day or is this going to be a bad day? Like I'm literally terrified. But um, I thank God that I'm not in the pain that I was in. Um, like a day like today when I am experiencing pain, I try my best not to complain about it. Um, I had stopped, I did stop taking Motrin um, the rest of the last week into this week. I took some Motrin the other day and I took 400 Motrin today. Um, thinking about popping some more. Not sure. Probably when I get in the house for the night, I'll probably, um, yeah, not milligrams. 400, not, the number. Yeah, no, no, no. Just no. want to let you guys know. Don't say nobody be here. here. Um, I may take an oxy later. I've been trying to save them motherfuckers. Yeah. Because my doctor was like, I'm going to give you some, but you're going to use them responsibly. I want more. I want to take them for the Don't rest of my life. Camera. I do. I love them. I love how they make me feel so much. Like when they finally do kick in, it's like, like when Tinkerbell sprinkles the dust on you. It's just like, all right, let's go. But um, yes, yeah, so I just wanted to update you all. Um, I hope you all are staying safe. I hope you all are wearing your mask. Don't be like these people who aren't wearing their masks. Don't be that person. Um, if your state is hope open, I mm, hope don't that go you nowhere. aren't going crazy here in Baltimore. We're not our even state open, is open and they turned open. up. Yes, we're semi. on phase one, but our city is not open. At the all. city is having like block parties every week. Yeah. On their own. Mind you, the numbers are going up. Every day. So, um, you know, a fifteen year old just died the other day from it. It's like it's still a very serious issue, but nobody's taking it serious. Um 
So yeah, um, this weekend we're going to celebrate my mother's birthday. I'm really excited. We're going to get some crabs. Yep. Some corn, some hot dogs. Oh, didn't somebody say they never saw people eat? They never saw us eat crabs like that. We should probably record. I thought about recording, but we do have a video where we did um, Mother's Day a couple and years I'm ago. And I'm gonna be on a grill. Mm -hmm. I'm so. like a master griller these days. So happy Gemini season is coming up. Shout out to the Taurus season that's leaving. Gemini season is just, it's like when the warm air really starts to come yeah, in. Yeah, it's really fun because it's just like, this is when summer really starts to come in. But at the same time, these motherfuckers are crazy. No, they are. They are honestly fucking crazy. And um, I'm scared. You never know what you're going to get out of Gemini season. No, you never know. You, you never, never know, know what you're going to get out of Gemini season. So, um, so shout like... out to the Geminis. Enjoy your season. Um, I'm sure we'll have something up soon. Again, I did want to tell you guys that, um, I like I said, I do have these two videos on my phone. I was trying to figure out a way that I could edit them because for the spaghetti one, we did a spaghetti no measurements. I never got to end it. I went to sleep. Oh, so I never like show the spaghetti at the end and like oh, us yes. eating it. Um, so it's pretty much just Tanea cooking. And we got all the way to the end. So, I mean, I'm going to post it, but it's, it's no like end where you see us eating and I have um, the video from when we tried the fish sandwich from Arby's. Oh my god, that was like seven months ago. Seven months, Tania? Seven weeks ago. Seven weeks. So, um, but I got to get them out of my phone. So I'm going to um, post those um, if you see that they end kind of crazy. That's why I don't want to delete them though. But um, my phone is telling me I need to back it up and I can't because I don't have any memory. Yikes. Yikes. Here we are again. It's just like, bitch. I don't know why my phone is like this, but um, I'm about to delete some shit. Yeah, you absolutely need to. But, um, yeah, so ladies, do not forget to DM me about these depot shots, these Morena, and if you have any suggestions on what to do if I do get back in pain like that. If you have had a hysterectomy or a partial hysterectomy, I would love to hear your story. Um, please continue to keep me in your prayers. I still need them. And um, we will continue to pray for you all because we, the world, needs them, honestly. Donald Trump said reopen the country. <laughs> he also took some medicine yesterday that could possibly kill no, him. No, I thought he's been taking it for a week. Oh, well, yeah. that could possibly harm him. And You know what? Do what you got to do, honestly, at this point. But, um, so, yeah, we'll see you guys soon. Yeah, we'll we see still you guys are soon. here. We still love you. We're still teleworking. We're still fat. Yeah. We As you can see, we're still fat. I can't believe we got this fat. <sighs> this is your first time watching. Make sure you subscribe. We'll be here when we be here. For the people who have been watching, make sure you share this video. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell your mother, your cousin, your sister, your brother. Tell somebody about the show. And we'll see you guys next time. Oh, and if you didn't know, now you know. There's no show like the show. We gotta, we gotta go. go. I am so hungry. What you want to eat? I don't know. Me neither. But it's like, I might as well just take you now.